Hey everybody, I just got back from sunny Canada and I'm gonna tell you all about the things I saw at TennoCon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, TennoCon is the fan event for Warframe. Tenno is what the player characters are called in Warframe and it's a con for Tenno. So yeah, I had a really amazing time meeting new people. I made a lot of friends from all over the place like Finland and Scotland and the UK and Canada, of course. I talked to the devs and the actors and I got to see what's coming up in Warframe and Soulframe. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of that here uh, in a second. Uh, I've got a lot of b-roll so I I'm just shooting this at home because I'm mostly just going to be covered up by b-roll. Um, spoiler warning, I guess, generally, uh, just kind of a blanket spoiler warning because Warframe has a few cool surprises in it that may or may not be shown or implied in this video. Um, nothing, you know, I'm going to try to avoid most stuff, so just, you know, be careful if you don't want to be spoiled on Warframe, just go play Warframe. It's, it's cool. Um, but yeah, so what was at the con? Uh, there were a bunch of different areas. It was split up into kind of zones. It was at the RBC in Canada and it was kind of the whole building and outside the building. Uh, there were different areas like um, up in the outside of the main show floor. They had a little kind of a set from uh, 1999. A little motorcycle was there, the Atomic Cycle with the Arthur statue whose sword spins, which is cool. Uh, they had the subway from 1999, which was in uh, Warframe Whispers in the Wall uh, a while ago. They had the operator chair, which if you know what that is, that's pretty cool. Um, then outside they had the this big tent set up to look like the Vent Kids area, uh, who are some kids on Fortuna on Venus. Uh, and they had a bunch of arcade games there that you uh, used. <laughs> tickets to redeem for prizes, but of course, uh, it's Warframe fans, so everyone figured out how to min-max all the games pretty much immediately, so it was all kind of, <laughs> it was pretty funny, like, everyone was just <laughs> scamming these games. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were playing them actually, legitimately. Uh, this person was really good at skee-ball. Um, they had gotcha machines filled with relics, uh, which are, you know, like they had Mezzo, Lith, uh, Neo, and the very cool looking Requiem uh, relics. And you busted those open and then they had pins inside or, you know, re-rolls and stuff like that. And then they had a trading area where you could trade for those. Uh, so that was really neat. Uh, they had a very hard trivia machine. Uh, I got, I felt pretty confident because I got the first half of the questions right. And then it was just like, hey, what is the specific weapon that this specific enemy uses in this specific thing from four years ago? And I was just like, okay, I don't, I don't know that. Uh, they had these really beautiful wings that, that had like kind of light up wings, which I have on my orbiter actually um, in the game. And there was a proposal, somebody, a couple proposed. Um, it was a gay couple, so they changed the wings to pride colors, which is really cool. Uh, this is also where, on the first night, they had a DJ and the party for TennoCon stuff was here. They had a really cool merch area, obviously. You gotta sell merch at something like this. They had bottle bobbleheads and mugs and shirts and skateboards and, uh, you'll be very proud of me. I didn't buy the hundred dollar vinyl. I'm waiting for the Whispers in the Walls, Jade's Shadows vinyl that I hope that they do and then I'll buy that. <laughs> I'll buy that one, because that music is really good. It's a little big. Do I look like a little kid? <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was a huge amount of amazing cosplay. Uh, they had a showcase and a contest that you can watch online, I believe. Um, I loved these two, and I talked to them a bit about their fits. So these costumes, the reason they were chosen is because uh, the story of Albrecht and Lloyd is very intense and it has a lot of lore behind it. So it's part of the reason I love Warframe, it's part of the reason these costumes were chosen. Um, and the process was intense, we've been doing it for months, um, so I'm glad to have it here at TennoCon. Right, right they were just roommates. Throughout the day there were a whole bunch of really cool panels. Uh, I went to one about sound design and music, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the choral stuff that they did for Jade Shadows is really, really good. Uh, some of my favorite video game music, maybe ever. Uh, and 
then I also watched the Soul Frame panel, the first dev stream for that, uh, and they showcased an extended gameplay demo from Soul Frame Preludes, which is kind of their like pre-alpha or like alpha pre-early release pre-beta thing. Um, but they also announced that they're going to start letting in more people, and this fall, everyone will be able to get into Preludes. Uh, so that means you get to play Soul Frame pretty soon uh, in the fall. And somewhere in that window, they'll stop doing account resets. So I presume that that, uh, that will all carry over into the real game, question mark? Which is kind of cool, because the stuff I'm playing right now, because I got into Preludes maybe a month ago. Um, so I have played quite a lot of Soul Frame. I can talk about it in a second. But um, yeah, I think all the progress, or I know that all the progress I have right now will be reset, which makes sense, because like it's not final yet, and that wouldn't exactly be fair. Uh, the stuff they showed in the extended gameplay demo from this dev stream was really cool. They're doing kind of like a Fallout thing where they are, um, which one was that, Fallout 4? Uh, where you kind of make your mom, and then that sets the default of what your the default of your character will look like. You can then change it from there too, but like, that's kind of neat. And just like, I, I don't know, Soul Frame is so weird and so cool. And like everything rhymes, <laughs> like it's like poetry. Like every, all the dialogue is poetry. A copper glow like amber rocks, a wealth of warmth and of her locks. They've described it as kind of a, obviously they know what they're doing with the name Souls. Uh, but they don't, it's not really a Souls-like, it's, it's obviously, it's focused on combat and exploration, but it is more like, I don't know, it's, it's like an easy Souls game, it's like a friendly Souls game, I, I would say, like, um, not to say that it's like overly easy or anything, but it's not, it's not focused on being punishingly difficult, it's more about kind of just inhabiting this world and experiencing this lore, and, um, I really, I really like the setting, and I really like the, the vibe of it. You know, you're like res rescuing animals. You've got this bird that you clip, uh, click your fingers, uh, snap your fingers. That's how you say that. You snap your fingers, and this bird is your guide, um, which is very important to use in the dungeons and stuff because uh, <laughs> you can get kind of lost, <laughs> and you're not really sure what you're supposed to do sometimes. And then the bird will show you, and it's really nice. Uh, there's this cool um, elixir lady, which is one of the new... Th they just showed her at the panel, uh, which is one of the ancestors. Uh, already in Preludes, is, there's an ancestor that's like the blacksmith who... She's got imposter syndrome, but the more you blacksmith with her, the, the more she does, the better she feels about herself, which is kind of nice. And then there's this other like kind of historian guy. Um, but yeah, this is the lady who... Uh, she'll concoct elixirs for you, and she'll help you do color changes for your, like, color palette and stuff, uh, which is nice. Um, and she's just, like, I don't know, she's got a really good vibe. She's, like, French, I guess, and, like, covered in rats, <laughs> which she calls poppets. But, um, yeah, very cool. Uh, this Nimrod Thunder Boss was pretty cool, and it looks like you use an elixir to... Uh, dispel the clouds and then it kind of nerfs him a little bit and you can fight him but like as they were going in the demo you know you kind of uh, encounter him a few times and he seems like basically unkillable like I think you know scripted probably for the demo purposes but like they died to him once and then it shows how you get back to your body uh, using the bird which is pretty cool uh, yeah soul frame I don't know soul frame is really neat if you played warframe um, and did the Daviri Paradox. It's kind of like that. The combat is way better. Um, it's smoother, a little faster, more nuanced. I thought Daviri combat was... Like, I really like the circuit in Daviri, but um, I thought Daviri combat, especially just getting dumped in as I did because I didn't know what the hell was going on, um, wasn't my favorite thing. <laughs> but uh, Soul Frame, I really enjoy. Um, you can... You can uh, do a lot of stuff with different weapons and different armor and different builds and different abilities and stuff like that too, uh, which is really cool. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to Soul Frame. It's uh, pretty different than Warframe. I'm wondering if there's going to be like a twist or like more like something else to it. But like so far, I really am 
enjoying Soul Frame and looking forward to it getting developed. And like, I've learned through playing Warframe and meeting the team and talking to all the devs and stuff, like, this is a team that has confidence in their vision and is willing to listen, change things, and let things grow over time, which I really appreciate. And I think that more people need to do in, uh, especially games as a service games, because yeah, sometimes you gotta let it grow for a little bit. <laughs> let it, uh, you know, and that's a theme of Soul Frame is you're freeing animals, you're, you're you know, kind of bringing life back sort of a little bit. Uh, it's neat, I don't know, Soul Frame is cool. Then, uh, after that, uh, later in the day, 4.30, it was time for the main event, TennoCon Live! Here they had a whole bunch of really cool announcements. Uh, you can watch, by the way, all of these videos and stuff in full. The Soul Frame one, the you know the stuff that's all it's all there. You can watch it, and especially this whole Warframe, all the announcements and the Warframe '99 demo that they did. So I'm not going to you know obviously show everything in full, but I am going to kind of run down quickly what they have said and what they showed here. Uh, they talked about the next three updates happening in 2024 all uh, happening this year. The next one is in August, so, you know, in as little as oh, two weeks? What is that? Uh, I mean, I don't know when in August, but, you know, they didn't say, I, like, I think it would have hit harder if they had said, like, coming in two weeks, so my guess is the end of August, <laughs> but because they're just saying August, but yeah. Uh, the Lotus Eaters quest, which also comes with Sebagoth Prime. You know, it says you reunite with uh, one of Warframe's most iconic characters in the Lotus Eaters, a prologue quest that picks up after the events of Whispers in the Walls, setting the stage for the stakes of Warframe 1999. The update will ship alongside Sebagoth Prime, uh, which is very cool. Uh, they showed the Ember Heirloom uh, skin, which they had showed previously, but it's out now. You can get it. I bought it. It is, uh, you know, everyone makes this pun, but she's very hot. <laughs> like, this key art is, like, I'd go, it, it, she's, the back is very, she's got, she's caked up, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's good, it's a great skin. <laughs> Warframe knows what it's doing. They said that Warframe 1999 will have an anime short, uh, coming out with it, uh, by Animation House The Line. Uh, and you're seeing the key art now, which looks really cool. The vibe of it looks really neat. Uh, it's going to dive deeper into the world of Warframe 1999, and they said it should come out alongside Warframe 99 this year. Uh, they announced that they will have an unannounced <laughs> uh, 2024 update at Tokyo Game Show, uh, which will debut a new frame uh, and new quality of life stuff. And that's going to be at Tokyo Game Show later this year. They're going back to both Gamescom and Tokyo Game Show this year, so that'll be cool. Uh, they've got a new Caliban skin, and they're reworking Caliban and giving everybody Caliban for free, the base version. So that'll be nice. Uh, you can favorite items now, or later down the line with one of these updates, you'll be able to favorite items which people freaked out about. The energy at TennoCon is incredible. <laughs> Everyone uh, was having a really good time and kind of reacting really well to everything. I mean, obviously it's a Warframe event, so people are gonna be excited about Warframe, but yeah. Uh, and there are new Incarnan weapons coming, which is really exciting because those are really good, strong weapons usually. Uh, Warframe 1999 is coming out in winter of 2024. Some people were speculating New Year's Eve, but I feel like I'm hoping earlier, but who knows? Uh, they said when when somebody asked uh, about the size of the update the main story mission will take a few hours uh, as is typical um, but then uh, to do all the content they compared it to whispers in the walls or maybe a little bigger um, so yeah like I still haven't completed everything in whispers in the walls um, I did the story obviously but like there is some stuff I haven't quite unlocked yet, so it's like, you know, it's not tiny. I have some of the press announcements here. Warframe 1999, uh, you enter a brand new era of Warframe by traveling back to Earth in 1999 and discover a grungy, alternate world littered with secrets. Narratively team up with the cast of six different iconic proto-frames in order to track down Dr. Entrati before the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Eve. New and notable features Arriving alongside Warframe 1999 include 
infested 90s boy band hunts. Uh, you, the infested liches are coming to Warframe, and the, they are skinned as members of the boy band online. <laughs> they are technocyte uh, infested variations of Earth iconic heartthrobs. And the lead singer of the band, Zeke, is being voiced by Nick, uh, who, who is the voice of Leon from Resident Evil 4, who's streamed with us a couple of times. He's very cool. And also, you can download the hit single from this band, Party of Your Lifetime, right now. You can listen to it on pretty much everything, so that's fun. It's a banger. It's kind of a bop. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, there's a romance system now <laughs> coming to Warframe. Uh, they have like an legally distinct AOL Instant Messenger, uh, and you can develop relationships and connect with the, the six part proto frames, including Ben Starr, who's voicing Arthur, and Alpha, who's voicing Owie. Uh, and like all of them are voiced. These characters are really neat. And they all equate to frames, obviously, in the future. Uh, so they're proto frames. There was some confusion at first if like it was Arthur ref uh, romancing these. Uh, you play as Arthur during the prologue quest, but then you play as a character you know that comes back. Um, and at first I thought maybe it was the operator, but then I realized there was romance happening. So I was like, okay, it must be the drifter. Cause like, that would be kind of weird if it was the operator. <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. Uh, they have a, a new Warframe, Site 09. Uh, previously a reckless and friendless fortune hunter. Now he lends his skills to Arthur's team as the best marksman around. And then, you know, he'll be playable in the origin system. And then you have new mounts, weapons, and skins. Obviously, uh, you can ride the Atomicycle cycle anywhere in 1999, which is super cool. It can drift, it can bullet jump, you can chuck it at enemies like an explosive. It's awesome. Uh, they have kind of more realistic uh, weapons, like the AX-52 that Arthur uses. Uh, everything is voice acted, customizable. And then they've got these cool new things called Gemini skins, where you can go into a mission with two fashion frames and use an emote to switch to the proto frame variant of that uh, frame. So I think, you know, it'll be, I assume it'll only work on Excalibur or Nyx or whatever, but like, I don't know, that's kind of rad. Yeah, so you can watch that full thing. I recommend it. It's really fun to watch. Uh, and I mean, even if you're not caught up, uh, it might like, give you an incentive to catch up because like Sophia watched it and she was like, oh man, I got to catch up because this looks really cool and I'm really excited for it too. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you have to be current. You have to get through the new war and I think whispers in the walls and everything to get to this. So, you know, you've got a little work ahead of you, uh, especially farming for that Necromech. God damn it. That's <laughs> so, kind of annoying that part, but like everything else I love in Warframe. Yeah, I don't know. I just like, this experience was so much fun for me. Like, obviously I've been to a million cons and like covered E3 a bunch and stuff. And it's, I feel very fortunate, but like as part of my job that I get to do these super fun things. But um, my like seeing Reb and Megan at Game Awards and being like, I should play Warframe. The next update, Whispers in the Walls. Are they? Oh, yeah, thanks for having us back to Devs at Home. We love you guys. <laughs> My desire to play Warframe just skyrocketed. <laughs> 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 to being flown to Tenocon Pipeline is very funny to me. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I just think like, yeah, now I've got like, 360 hours on this game and it's my most played PlayStation game ever. You know, it's just kind of like, who saw that coming? Like, I didn't assume I would like Warframe that much. Um, I got to interview the uh, three of the voice cast, Nick, Alpha, and Ben Starr, um, and Rebecca and Megan, uh, and it was a really great interview. Um, I'm posting it separately. Uh, it, it's mostly audio only, sadly, because uh, Y2K happened and corrupted my card. Um, I think one of the slots on my camera is fried, um, which really sucks because that was the slot that had my day one filming and this interview on it. Um, so I might have to buy a new camera or something or go get it repaired or something. Yeah, it like ate the card. I'm kind of sad about it. The 
Tech rot, got it. As they would say in 1999. You wanna risk it to control some tech rot? So that kind of sucks, but I was recording the audio separately. It is what it is. Like, this kind of stuff happens, so I'm kind of... Like, I held it together. I was like, I almost cried. I was like, shit. <laughs> but it's fine. So yeah, it's, uh, it was a fun interview. Um, but yeah, I got to tell them what the game means has come to mean to me, uh, which uh, was really nice. I'll kind of end on that. But um, I, that gave me the idea, like, getting to tell them that. I wanted to ask some of the attendees at the con what Warframe means to them because uh, everyone was so friendly and so polite and like you could really feel the love for this game and for this community and like it was like a very diverse crowd, a very like inclusive crowd, everyone was just so chill and everything was so nice and it really speaks to Warframe and what Warframe kind of stands for and like I don't know. It it was really fun and like every the vibes were just super good. So yeah, I asked attendees what Warframe means to them and here's uh, what they said and then I'll end on the uh, little kind of redo of the end of the interview that I got to do with the devs in the voice cast. I guess like what Warframe means to me, I've been playing for nine years and it's just like watching it grow like I was a kid when I started playing and the music, the story and like the love they have for the game really shows and it's just been nice being part of the community. It's just such a great community honestly and I I don't play a lot of this type of game but I've been playing since 2019 because it just the story alone just really drags you in and they got so many little lore bits everywhere that's just incredible. Warframe to me has been an amazing game. I've played it for the past six years. I've gotten a ton of my friends to play it including this dummy right here and uh, it's built a lot of great friendships over the years, so it's been awesome. I've actually uh, been playing since about its third birthday. At first, it was just kind of a cool game that I started playing. Uh, ever since then, it's kind of been an inspiration for me in life, and specifically certain keynotes of like the end of The War Within and other such quests really speak to me as an individual. Just fighting on multiple fronts, not only in life, but also in our personal lives. It's a, there's a lot of little beautiful keynotes in it that I just really speak to me as a person. It's It means a lot of things, some that I don't even know I can voice. It's a lot. <laughs> Warframe, to me, is a bonding experience. And we're a couple that plays together. And it's kind of that fun time where we can just be super creative in a gaming environment and do whatever you want in like open worlds or you know whether it's diving into a new quest or anything like that. Yeah, even just grinding. I mean, yeah, the grind is real. The grind is real. <laughs> I've been playing Warframe since 2016 and it's really gotten um, a lot of like my friends I've seen. Actually, this guy right here, we met on Warframe in a clan and now I'm just, I met him for the first time today. <laughs> yeah, he's one of my greatest friends just, just from Warframe. So yeah, <laughs> the clan community is really great. It's wasting your time, honestly. Uh, if you have nothing better to do with your life, spend it on Warframe. Uh, I've been playing for like eight years and I have 2,000 hours mission time, that doesn't count the amount of time I spent on trade chat. Yeah. You can either burn your wallet or burn your sanity, and it's perfectly fine. That's what it's all about on Warframe. That or collecting too many primes. For me, Warframe is a, a time to relax, have some fun, and just uh, enjoy the community it has on there. Also, just to grind a little bit. It's a thing I like to do, I don't know why. <laughs> fun yeah for real now nah, like uh warframe was the first game that like me and uh me and kai could play um like when they brought out cross platform that was a game changer so being able to like grind with friends endlessly um that was a nice a nice thing warframe for me has been a game that never in my life has become part of my life as much as it has um I started playing about nine, ten years ago, and I've never had a game that has shaped me as a person, as well as a hobby, transform a hobby into a lifestyle. You can push um, pause and then okay. pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Hard. I got my food. I continue. Um, so Warframe is a game that has changed my life uh, from the time that I was a teenager to a, a grown adult. 
Um, it's made me change career paths to learn game development. Uh, I currently am in school for it and I'm about to graduate my associate's degree. Um, and talking to the devs, uh, it, is, it is an experience. Every experience I have talking to devs is life changing and a core memory. And I could go on forever about how much I love the devs and the community and everything, but it, it is a true core part of me and I would never ever change any part of it. Thank you for making this game that includes so many people and like you've got like queer storylines. I never expected to see that in a game like this. There's a pregnancy storyline, spoiler alert for a certain thing. Um, I'll put the spoiler alert for, it, this whole thing is spoilers, fuck off. Um, yeah, fuck off. Fuck you guys. Fuck off, fuck beloved you. viewers. Yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> yeah, fuck you all. We're out of time anyway, but uh, thank you all so much. I look forward to meeting more of Arthur, yep. meeting AO as not a voice, AOE. Yeah, AOE. 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 Owie Owie and it Zeke. Blue. It means what? Blue. Blue. Like the ends of your hair. That's cute. I love that. Um, thank you all so much for everything you've done and that you do and continue to do. Love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye 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 bye. bye, bye. And that's that. Uh, that was my trip to Tenocon uh, and uh, you know a lot of the new updates and stuff. Uh, thank you to the team at Digital Extremes for putting on a great con and taking such good care of us, the press people that you flew out there to cover it. Um, I had a blast, uh, and I look forward to next year, which they've already announced the dates. Same bat time, same bat convention center. It's up in uh, London, Ontario again, July 18th and 19th, I think, uh, 2025. So that'll be cool. So mark your calendars. you got a year to fall in love with Warframe like I did, and then meet me at TenoCon 2025. <laughs> Uh, check out patreon.com slash easy allies if you enjoyed this video. Uh, we do all kinds of stuff that's not generally like this video. Uh, usually we're at the studio, we're doing our podcasts, we're doing previews, reviews, and streams, and all that kind of stuff. And it's all supported by viewers like you. So thank you so much, uh, and we'll see you again later. <laughs>